Okay, it's 3 p.m. Thank you everybody for coming. This is upgrading to Drupal 10 using the Migrate API. Uh, my name is Mauricio Dinarte. The slide deck and everything that I'm going to be presenting today um, is already available, so you can go to that uh, URL and from there you will get more content. Um, my username is Dinarcon. That is my email. My pronouns are he and him. I am from Nicaragua. Uh, Nicaragua is very beautiful, very hot. Uh, and there are a lot of lakes and volcanoes. I am a software engineer at Agaric, and I also an instructor at understanddrupal.com. I enjoy reading, traveling, and learning languages, both human and computer languages. If you speak English, Spanish, French, or Portuguese, feel free to talk to me. <laughs> if you speak another language, I might not be able to reply. Um, as I said, uh, I collaborate with Agaric. Uh, we are a worker owned cooperative based in Boston, but we have people uh, all over the place, uh, myself in Nicaragua, we have partners in, in Germany and here in the States in different cities. Um, I am very passionate about teaching. Um, I have written a lot about Drupal migrations and I plan to just continue writing about other topics, uh, site building, module development, uh, theme development. In this website, understanddrupal.com, for the most part, the content is in English at the moment, but I'm working on translating uh, to Spanish and French. And I would also like to thank Spantheon for helping uh, me to get here to Pittsburgh to be present at the conference through their Pantheon Heroes program. Uh, this is what we'll be, we will be covering today, uh, triggering the upgrade process from the UI, uh, from the command line, and how we can use uh, the migrations that are automatically generated as a base for a custom migration. If you want to follow along, as I said, the slide deck is already available and there are also companion modules like this session is sometimes presented as a full day workshop and the, the code for the workshop and for setting up the whole project is open source, it's freely available, so you can get it from there. And by the end of the session, I would like you to provide some feedback and that is the feedback link. So let's get started. Um, before going too far, I just want to point out the fact that the Migrate API in Drupal core is an implementation of a design pattern called extract, transform, and load. This is not exclusive to Drupal. This is not exclusive to PHP. Um, there are a lot of documentations. I recommend the book on the left, uh, the Data Warehouse ETL Toolkit. And the one on the right is a book that I wrote a few years ago about Drupal migration. Like, if you don't know anything about migrations, uh, with this book, it's like one short article for 31 days, and you will learn how to migrate content from different sources to different destination entities, and just like general tips for working with migrations and debugging them. Uh, as I said before, this is sometimes presented as a workshop, and there are recordings available, so if you want to see like a hands-on demo, those are the links to, to watch the recordings. Today we're going to talk about the process, uh, give some general recommendations, but if you actually want to see how to run a migration visually, that's, that's uh, where you need to go. So let's start by preparing an upgrade. And before going any further, um, upgrading in this context is if you have a Drupal 6 or 7 site and you want to move it to Drupal 9 or Drupal 10, I'm going to explain more about you know, those versions later on, but just be mindful about this is what I'm talking about, six or seven to eight, nine or 10. So what do I recommend? Uh, that you create an inventory of the modules used in the source and in the destination sites, audit the content and the configuration in the source site, understand the assumptions that the Migrate API is doing, be aware of some uh, issues and limitations, and know what is the scope of the system. So we're going to go over one by one. As for the source side uh, module inventory, I highly recommend that you use the operated status module. This is going to, is, uh, you are going to install it in Drupal 7, for example, and it is going to check all the modules that are enabled on the Drupal 7 side if uh, they are available or if there is a replacement for Drupal 10. Uh, and you will get like different recommendations. In, in this uh, screenshot, uh, the address field was a module in Drupal 7 that didn't exist in Drupal 9. It was replaced with another one called address, just address. Uh, so you get, um, you get the recommendation of, you know, this is no longer available, but you can use this module instead. In the case of the date module, part of 
date in Drupal 7 was incorporated into Drupal core, but some of the elements were not, and you will also get a notice about that. And in the case of the entity API, um, you know, that is everything available in Drupal core, basically, so you, you get a, a notice about that. One thing to be aware is that the operator status module checks that a module is available. It doesn't mean that it will have an automatic operate path. That is something different. Uh, just be mindful that being available doesn't guarantee that your data is going to be moved over for free or automatically. Um, in addition to um, getting the list of modules, I also recommend that you audit uh, you know, content types, vocabularies, menus, because many, many times, I would say like 99% of the projects that I have worked on, there is something to change either improve or adopt new features of uh, like new modules that are available in newer version of Drupal, or they just have some legacy content that they no, no longer need. They want to change uh, some configuration. So it is very likely that by inspecting what you have today, you are going to find out things that are no longer necessary or that you want to change in some way or another. So from a configuration standpoint, but also from a content standpoint, like uh, you don't have to, to spend too much time on it, but just uh, you know, do a do a, a basic uh, review of what you already have. And I have a template that I use uh, in the in, in some of the projects, uh, udrupal.com slash site dash audit. And again, it's just like high level, like this is the list of content types, this is the list of notes per content type, what do I want to do? Drop it, replace it, keep it. Um, and basically for different uh, entity types, I, I, will, I will do this analysis. Um, something that is not an entity necessarily, uh, but it's well, it is worth checking is like uh, roles, uh, text formats, image styles, basically anything that uh, triggers a warning as to, oh, I might need this module or I might need to find a solution to this, uh, that I was doing before and it's no longer available. Um, just like document it in one document and have that as a source of truth and as a reference to be used later on. In terms of assumptions uh, of the API itself, let's, for, for the sake of this presentation, so I don't have to repeat an, a lot of different version numbers, let's say that we're migrating from Drupal 7 to Drupal 10. So your Drupal 7 site needs to be in the latest uh, stable release and Drupal 10 should be in the latest stable release. In Drupal 10, there should be no content or configuration. You basically install the site using the minimal installation profile and uh, you start the process from there. And then if you want to get automatic migrations, uh, you need to enable the modules in both the source site, Drupal 7, and the destination site, Drupal 10. Um, we're, again, we're going to go more in depth into each of these steps as uh, we uh, continue in the presentation. And just be mindful that this is the assumption, this is the recommendation, but sometimes life is not perfect. You need to deviate from the norm and it is possible, but this is the base uh, that the Migrate API is going to use. Uh, in terms of a scope, you are only going to be able to migrate content and configuration automatically. Uh, if you have custom modules that is not covered by the Migrate API, uh, you can get either you can use either upgrade status or upgrade director to help with the process of upgrading custom code, but that's not the Migrate API responsibility. And if you have a Drupal 7 theme, basically you need to recreate it from scratch, like the uh, template that was used for writing teams in Drupal 7 and in Drupal 10 is completely different. And as far as I know, there are no automatic you know, translations tools. And in terms of issues and limitations, uh, this comes with a caveat. Uh, like everything that I say, the next time that I present a session, something has changed. And one that changed for the better is views migrations. In the past, uh, it used to be like, oh, we don't support views migrations automatically. You need to recreate them all. I have worked on sites with literally hundreds of views and that was very painful to do manually. But uh, locally, now we have uh, the views migration module. It is, I would say 80%, like it will get you 80% there. There, because views is so popular and there are so, so many plugins that might be available for views in Drupal 7 that do not have a counterparty Drupal 10. 
Uh, it may not be able to get everything perfect, but for the most part, uh, it does a really good job in getting at least part of the views um, migration uh, automated. Uh, in terms of filter formats, um, if there is one that is not recognized in the new site, by default, it will return an empty string. The content will be present in the database. Um, you might need to you know, do some cleanup after the migration, but the, the data is going to be there. If you use PHP module in Drupal 6 or Drupal 7, that is no longer supported uh, for many reasons, including security ones, so we don't support that. And if you already have content in Drupal 10, it is possible still to use uh, part of what we will, we will be talking about today, but just be mindful that uh, if you're not careful, you might be overriding content and relationships between content. Uh, let's say that you know, in my Drupal 10 site, I create node one, and node one was, uh, you know, authored by user five. And then I run the automatic operating procedure. And in the old site, uh, node one was, was created by user three. So you will lose who was the author of the node and the content that was already created before. So just be mindful about that. There are a lot of different ways in which you can work around that, but this is what the API assumes by default. Now, how do you actually perform the upgrade? Um, there are at least two different options. Uh, one is through the user interface and the other one is through the command line. Uh, if you do it from the user interface, it works out of the box. You don't need any contributed module for it to work, but it is not customizable. You basically get a one-to-one -one copy of the previous site, as much as Drupal can do. Uh, there are things that might not be able to be automatically migrated, but, um, Drupal will do its best effort and you get what Drupal could do and you cannot change much of the process itself. If you go the command line route, you will need Drush and a couple of contributed modules, um, but it is very customizable. And I think like every migration that I have worked on, I, I end up doing command line migration because uh, it is more flexible. And I want to highlight that this allows for content model changes. So mo most of the time I need to do that. So let's see how we do it from the user interface. Uh, you install Drupal 10 using the minimal installation profile. In Drupal 10, you enable migrate, migrate Drupal, and migrate Drupal UI. So migrate is the core of the API. Migrate Drupal gives you a lot of source and process plugins that uh, are specifically for uh, moving data from a Drupal 6 or 7 site. And then the migrate Drupal UI is the interface. Um, you enable the modules that are going to be automatically migrated both in Drupal 7 and in Drupal 10. You go to your domain slash upgrade and then you follow the wizard. In the wizard, you are going to be asked to enter the database credentials and if you want to migrate files, um, you will also be able to provide either a fully qualified domain name for, uh, or a, a path on the same server from which you, you will be able to pull the files. Um, after providing the credentials, you are going to be presented with a page like this. It's like a summary. Um, there are 31 modules that can be upgraded automatically. There are 11 that will not be upgraded automatically. And I want to highlight that you need to take this screen with a grain of salt because uh, it is not always 100% accurate. For example, um, views. When I took this screenshot, the other module that I mentioned before was not around. So um, but according to this, uh, the screenshot itself is, uh, is cropped down, but there were two options. One, views appear twice in the modules that cannot be upgraded and in the modules that could be upgraded. So it, at the very least, it was confusing why it appeared twice. Another thing, address field. Address field, if, if you can see in Drupal 9, uh, I have the address module. So the address module provides an automatic upgrade path from address field in Drupal 7. And it is enabled on both sides and it still appears uh, as part of the module that will not be able to be upgraded automatically. So again, a little bit confusing. Um, block in Drupal 7 was broken down into two modules in Drupal 10. So you need block and custom block. If you only enable one of them, the block migration will not be complete. So some of these come with trial and error or you know, come into sessions like this that give you a, a high level overview of how the system works. But the point is, treat this page as a reference. And for the most part, you might need to, you know, run the process as at least twice. Like, see how it goes the first time, 
see what worked, what didn't work, and then do it again. But um, this is like you review it. After you review it, um, it is going to perform the upgrade. Again, it is not customizable. It is going to do as much as possible. Um, everything that happens is going to be locked in the database. So after the process is complete, I recommend that you go to the logs, that you review the messages, that you review the general configuration of the site, the general content of the site. And as I said, and as I said before, very, very likely, you will need to do it again because the very first time uh, you, are, you are going to find surprises of things that work or didn't work. But you know, after two or three runs, uh, you profit. Like you, you, you got an, a, a set upgraded with relatively very little effort. Now, if you want to go the other route, which is uh, more flexible, you will be using the command line. Again, like the last time that I presented this, uh, this slide was a little bit different. The one thing to remember is uh, Drush, just like Drupal is evolving, the modules around uh, Migrate are also evolving and they do not necessarily evolve at the same pace. So at some point there might be inc incompatibilities between Drush versions and let's say Migrate Plus or Migrate Tools or Migrate Upgrade. So as of today, the latest stable release of all the modules that are needed and Drush itself are compatible, but sometimes that is not the case and you need to you know, figure out what things, why things are not working and you need to pin down specific versions for them to work. But as of today, if you are going to start a project today, everything in the latest stable releases is working. Now, um, what do you do? Again, you install Drupal using the minimal installation profile. You enable the migrate module, which is the core API, migrate Drupal to get the source and process plugins, migrate plus and migrate tools and migrate upgrade. Um, you enable, uh, again, the Drupal 7 and the Drupal uh, 10 modules that are going to be uh, automatically migrated. And this is where things start to change. Before, you had a, 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 a form in the interface where you will provide that database credentials. When you do it from the command line, you actually modify your settings.php file and add a new database connection. Basically, the same information that you provided in the form, you do here. Um, and then via the command line, you run the migrate upgrade uh, command. There is something that I want to highlight. The, uh, in the database arrays, the first key where it says legacy, that is what you're going to use in the upgrade, migrate upgrade command where it says legacy DB key. You know, that's why it says legacy. You can name that whatever you want. Uh, but in this case, it's legacy. That's why I have it there. And the important part of running this command is passing the configure only flag. If you don't pass the configure only flag, when you run the command, it is going to produce exactly the same result as if you were running from the user interface. Uh, but we want to be able to customize the migration, so we, we pass the configure only flag. I'm going to explain what it, it does in a moment. When you run that, um, a lot of migrations are going to be generated for you. But where are those migrations? The migrations are in Drupal's active configuration. And if you attended another session about the topic, you will know that by default, the active configuration is stored in the database. So how do you get the files so that you, for you to modify them? You need to export the configuration. Uh, you can do that using Drush. So you do a config export, and all the migration files that were generated uh, are going to be exported to the default uh, config directory. This is just like a very trimmed down version, but you can see that core.extension uh, is in the same level as the rest of my migration files. Now, when you have those files, again, you have multiple options to run them. You can run everything using a group a flag. This is going to produce the same result as if you do, if you do it uh, from the UI. Or you can say, I only want to run configuration migrations or I only want to run content migrations. And you can do that by using the tag uh, flag. But what I recommend is actually reviewing the migrations that were generated and cherry picking only what you need. As I said before, there is a high chance that something is not longer being needed or has to be changed. Um, in this example, uh, I'm going to show how to how to convert nodes to paragraph entities in, in the new site. So uh, bear with me a little bit. 
In this case, uh, what I did is I created a custom module called UD Drupal Upgrade. And in my config, I created a config instance folder and I moved the migration that I care about into this folder. And then I can start modifying those files. So um, this is an example of a content model change. The migration for um, uh, the UD book um, content type in this case used to be notes in Drupal 7. Uh, the annotation number one, you can see that I'm using a, a source plugin for notes. The annotation number two is mapping the fields and the base properties of notes in Drupal 7 to fields in paragraph in Drupal 10. And in the annotation number three, I'm saying that I want to migrate this into paragraph. So this is a very simple example of how you can change from one entity to another. Uh, Another example would be changing nodes uh, to user entities. Um, and I will be going over other examples throughout the, the presentation, but be mindful that when you do it like this, you have the option to customize the migrations and change entity types and so on. Now, by default, if you run the uh, migrations today, you will get what is called a node complete migration. That means that you will get the latest revision, all the history, like past revisions, and all the translations uh, in one go. If you don't care about the history, like previous revisions, if you don't care about translations, or if you want to have more control as to how those elements are going to be migrated, you can fall back to what is called a node classic migration. And you do that by, uh, again, updating settings.php with uh, you know, setting true to the migrate node, migrate type classic. And instead of getting one migration per content type that does everything, you are going to get three. One for the primary active revision, one for the previous revisions, and one for the translations. Another thing that I want to highlight is that when you use the migrate upgrade uh, module, by default, the migrations that you get are managed via configuration, as configuration entities. And this is provided by the Migrate Plus module. It is not the only way to work with migrations um, because uh, this is like the default behavior. That is why I show in the presentation. And when I was cherry picking the migrations, I had to put them in config install and I had to treat them as configuration entities. If you make any changes to the files, for the changes to be detected, you need to import the configuration again. Uh, you need to sync the configuration. There is a Drush command called Drush uh, config import partial that you can use to uh, you know, trigger those uh, file changes to the migration. And when you run them, when you create the migrations like this, you can run them either from the command line or from the user interface using the migrate tools module. Another way, and this is lately what I have been doing more uh, is just using migration plugins. For the most part, the two key differences are that instead of creating a, a config install directory, you create a, a, a migrations directory within your custom module, and the pattern for the uh, file name is going to be a little bit different. But other than that, you know they work for the most part the same way. And the reason why I like this approach is because if I want to make changes, I only need to clear the cache and it's faster than having to import configuration because sometimes you are working at the, like, on the configuration of the site at the same time that you are working on the migration. And if you're not careful, you might be like overriding your own work. So that's why I prefer this approach. Uh, and you need to run the migration from the command line. And this is something, uh, not new, but something that I want to share uh, today, like two hours ago, I released a new contributed modules related to migrations. And this is for something that I have found like a lot in the price that I have been working on. When talking about making content model changes, many, many times you want to drop a field. You don't want to migrate that field because let's, to give a concrete example, you were using radioactivity in Drupal 7 and you don't want that in Drupal 10 for whatever reason. When you run the automatic migration, it's going to try to upgrade everything. But then when it tries to get to the radioactivity field, it is going to break because it doesn't find a suitable Drupal 10 alternative. 
Uh, so many times, this is the type of errors that you're going to get and that you need to manually review. So because basically I find this error in every project that I worked on, I created a module and made it available for the community. And with this module, you will be able to skip fields based on different criteria. You can do it by entity type. Let's say I don't want to migrate any field that is attached to node Q in Drupal 7. You can also do it by bundles, like I don't want to migrate any field that is attached to the article content type in Drupal 7, or specifically by field name. Or you can also say, I don't want to migrate any field of this type, like video or radioactivity or something else. So if, uh, again, like this is probably the most common error that I find. So just to make it easier for myself and to share it with the community, I released this module earlier today, so I invite you to try it out and you know provide feedback. Now, some general tips and recommendations. Um, if there is one thing that I would like you to take home after attending this session is this slide. Uh, Leah Burrow, author of CSS Secrets, says that understanding the process of finding a solution is far more valuable than a solution itself. And the reason why I bring this up is because um, I used to provide a lot of support in Slack, in the migration uh, Slack channel with a lot of other people. And many times people go there and ask very specific questions, but they just want a snippet of code that they can copy paste and that would be it. Um, you know, that is fine. Sometimes we are able to provide those snippets of code and they work, but sometimes that is not the case. And spending time on, on learning how the Migrate API works outside of a, a, an upgrade pro, a project, will help you a lot when you actually need to, to perform an, an upgrade. Um, the book that I referred before, 31 Days of Migration, you can read it online for free. And again, like if you don't know anything about the Migrate API, that could be the start. Uh, and when you face challenges uh, that are more complicated in, in as part of the upgrade process, you will be able to you know ask more specific questions, or you will be able to understand better the recommendations that we provide. And in general, it's just like a good idea to understand the tools that you are using. So um, again, going back to tips and recommendations, be mindful of the concept of Drupal entities, and particularly what is a content entity and what is a configuration entity. Uh, for example, Drupal comes with two uh, nodes Bond, uh, with the with, uh, uh, two content types by default. So the content types belong to the uh, node type entity. There are no nodes created, which would be uh, content. So as long as you understand the difference between configuration and content, um, it is going to be very helpful. One, th one thing to note about 90% of the projects that I have worked over the past, I don't know, five years that I've been doing migrations pretty much full time, um, they only do content migrations. Um, it, and the reason is because they want to use a completely different uh, content model or they just want to benefit from models that were not available before and they just like want to start from scratch. Normally what they do is like, they build the site from scratch, just like the structure, the shell of the site. And once that is created, they move over the content. So if you understand the difference, uh, what is content and what is configuration, you will be able to more easily cherry pick the migrations that were generated to only select the ones that are related to content and to be able to make the adjustments as needed. And again, I will be talking about those content model changes later on, but just be mindful of the difference between content and configuration entities. In terms of content entities, it is good to know what are the different entity properties, uh, also called base field definitions. For example, nodes have an ID, a BID, the LAN code, the type, the status, UID, title, when it was created, and so on. So this is just like uh, you know, a subset of all the different options. It is also good to know if they are fieldable or not, and if they have bundles or not. For example, users can have fields, but the user entity doesn't have bundles. Files cannot have fields uh, nor bundles. Uh, media can have both. So again, like be mindful of all these different combinations. And this is useful because when you migrate a Drupal site, 
there will be different enti entities that are going to be connected to one another. And if you understand how they are connected, how they are related, you will be able to make changes to the content model um, easier. For example, in, in this case, I have um, nodes connected to files directly. But let's say that in my Drupal 10 site, I want to leverage the, the media uh, suite of modules. So I want to have a media entity in between. How do I do that? Okay, from node, I'm going to make a relationship to media, and then from media, I'm going to make a relationship to files. And as long as you understand, you know, what are those uh, in-between entities that need to be created, you will be able to do it, uh, again, easier. O other general recommendations, measure twice, cut once. Um, again, the Migrate API is not only for upgrading from Drupal 6 or Drupal 7. There is actually a bigger use case for it. So if you spend some time learning the core of the API, how it works, uh, it's going to be very useful for this. Uh, and, and you have the book that I talked about before. Um, if you have the time and the technical knowledge, another thing that is very, very useful is uh, understanding how the modules in Drupal 7 and in Drupal 10 store data. Because ultimately what you are, you are doing is moving content and data from one database to another. So if you know that, oh, this data, this field uh, type has, you know, three columns and that is the data that I need to move over, um, that is going to be useful uh, when you need to do like very, very custom migrations. Uh, one example would be if you have fields that you want to break down into multiple ones or if you have fields that you want to combine into one, Understanding the, the underlying data structure is very useful. And I have another presentation in which I give more concrete examples of how to look at the data model. Um, there is a website called Drupal.tv. And if you look for DinarCon or Mauricio Dinarte, you are going to find recordings to those uh, sessions that are more technical. And the one caveat is that if you are going to be creating this like very, very custom uh, uh, migrations, be mindful of revisions and translations because usually those are stored in separate tables uh, or separate columns, so be mindful about that. Also, create custom plugins as needed. Source and process plugins are the ones that you are going to create mo mo uh, most often. Now, as I said before, it is okay to deviate from the norm. Like the Migrate API has some assumptions. It expects you to work in one specific way but real life is different sometimes and you cannot abide by, by the rules all the time. So it is possible to migrate a site that has content and that has configuration already. And most of the projects that I work on, that is the case. The only thing that you need to be mindful is about the entity IDs. So to avoid collisions, uh, there are different strategies about that, but just be mindful of uh, how to deal with the entity IDs. Um, Another thing is that I have worked on projects that are like nine months, 12 months, 15 months, like they are just like have a very long uh, lifespan and it would be impractical to, you know, ha build everything and only till the very end start working on the migration. So it is possible to, you know, have, you know, site builders and developers build part of the site and then uh, someone working on migrations create the migration for what has already been built and then more people are building and then someone else is like uh, working on the migrations along the way. The only thing is that I have worked on projects in which something was changed, you know, three months later and you need to be very mindful about the migrations. Like if you change something but you don't change the migration, things are going to break. So uh, you can have test suites, you can have um, CI uh, as part of your of your CI process to run a partial migration and if something fails you are going to get an error and th that's how you can identify that there might be a configuration change that broke what a migration that had already been uh, implemented and um, again just to give an example the Migrate API can read from multiple sources um, I think it was like two years ago I work on a Drupal 9 project that was upgrading from Drupal 6. Again, it was long running. They needed to do testing with the content uh, before like launching the site. So for that specific project, 
we had three sources for the for the final side Drupal 6 which they were using very pretty much till the last minute a Drupal 9 environment in which they were entering content uh, just for practicing purposes but part of that content was supposed to go live at the very end and we had uh, CSV files uh, again like so we were getting content from three different sources into one final site and at the very end things work out pretty well. Um, more tips, um, start from an existing migration. Um, in the, as I said before, like this presentation is really like a full day workshop. And there are like real and complete examples of how to perform a migration. So if you have the time, I recommend that you look at the resources and you set, set up the, the local environment and run the migrations. And if you have something that know that works, you can start tweaking that, uh, you know, uh, uh, to test, to practice. Read the official documentation. The Merit API is, in my opinion, one of the best documented APIs in the whole of Drupal. Uh, I find it really useful. It's like one of my bookmarks that I visit every day. The, the one that lists the process plugins in Drupal core. It's, it's very well documented. Um, the files that you create are using YAML, and YAML is very sensitive to white spaces. So an extra white space or a missing white space can break the file. And it's not that your migration is wrong. It's like the file itself, uh, the syntax is not correct, and it will produce a fatal, a fatal error, basically. So be mindful about how you write the files themselves. Um, if possible, um, like divide the migration work in small chunks and sometimes what I do is like I do one field at a time I just want to make sure that this field is working before I move to the next one uh, depending on the complexity of the field uh, sometimes I just bond like every field of this type I'm going to focus on migrating them after that type is complete I go to the next type and, and migrate those but you know th again this comes with uh, practice find something that works for you, but you don't want to be in a position that you migrate the whole site, something is breaking, and you don't know what is breaking because um, there were no like stop points that you can use as a reference. Um, ultimately, the migration uh, definition files is text in, in YAML format, so commit to your repository often. Again, this is going to be one way in which you can recover if at some point you hit something that doesn't work and you just don't know why, you can go back in history in, in Git and to a state that, that you knew that was working before. Another thing is that you, don't, you, do not, you do not have to use the Merit API to do all the work. Uh, sometimes it is easier to do some cleanup either in Drupal 7 before you start the migration process or in Drupal 10 after the upgrade is complete. So, um, you can come up with very clever and complicated uh, process pipelines, if you will, that are going to give you a perfect migration in one go, but then you spend you know, three days versus spending one hour doing a manual content update. So try to balance the different options that you have. Um, analyze the errors and learn how to debug them. This is very, very important. Debugging migrations is a very useful tool. Uh, the, the reason why I created the module is because I was spending too much time debugging errors about fields. So I said, that's enough. I'm going to create a module that is going to automate this for me. But there are other errors that I find like only once. And as long as I am able to pinpoint what the cause of the problem is, uh, I can you know, provide a fix or see if there is a patch available and th the rest of the migration is going to work fine. And as I said before, the, the, migrate, the migrate community in general is very active in Slack in the Pound migration channel. Um, Benji is, is one of the maintainers. He also provides a lot of support there. So seek help from the community. Like we are very open. Um, the maintainers of the migrate API are distributed across the globe. So almost like you can ask 24 seven and you are going to get an answer either from a maintainer or from a, a volunteer. Uh, some examples of content model changes that I have done over the years, again, just for reference. If you were using files in Drupal 7 and you want to use media entities in Drupal 10, uh, there are modules that help you with that. Um, maybe you had uh, the location module in Drupal 7 and you want to use the address field in Drupal 9. You had some 
you know, blob of text in the body field and you want to put that into Layout Builder. You were using organic groups before and you want to use the group module now. Uh, if you have inside of your body field uh, inline resources that you want to convert to media entities, if you want to convert nodes to a different entity type like users or groups or paragraph, um, if there are fields or comp like full entities that need to be renamed or that need to be dropped, um, but this is part of what the module does, uh, just like dropping uh, either full entities or fields within the entities. And if you just have like plain text um, that you want to move into st like structured data, uh, I remember a project that I worked a few years ago that they were storing uh, like width, height, and depth. And it was just like a plain text field. And in, now there are, they are using uh, specific field types that, uh, you know, for this purpose. So we, we were using regular expressions to, you know, basically convert what they had before into the new, into the new field types. And um, that is the end of the presentation, but maybe it's the start of your own journey. I would like to thank all the maintainers of the Migrate API past and present, and in here in the room we have Benji, and everybody who has contributed to the API, they have done a very awesome work. I was talking to someone before the presentation and I said, the Migrate API is very, very stable. Like this session I could have given like two years ago, and probably only two or three slides would have been different. So it's a solid piece of work, it's very stable, and with time it only gets better because there are new modules that you know, we identify uh, a need for, for a common uh, challenge. We provide a module for that, but the API itself <laughs> is quite solid. So uh, thank you, I will be taking questions, and uh, thanks for attending today. Are there any questions? Yes? Uh, do you have any module recommendations for massaging uh, HTML? So say like there's an image in the HTML but it's missing, uh, how do you call it? Alt text? Alt text, yes. <laughs> so anything to like come back with that? Okay, so for the recording I will be repeating the question. If I have any recommendations for massage, massaging HTML data, and the concrete example was uh, if I have images in the body field with a missing alt attribute. So for images specifically, uh, there are two modules. One is called Migrate Media Handler. The other one is called Media Migration. Uh, they are both a specific about moving Drupal 7 files into Drupal 10 media, but they provide a lot of extra like uh, functionality to help with that. If you want to process HTML, generally speaking, like not only that, um, the Migrate Plus module, yeah, thank you. Benji wrote the plugins. The Migrate Plus modules have plugins for manipulating uh, the DOM. So you can use them directly. Any other question? Uh, yeah. Uh, earlier you talked about NPIDs, um, maybe are different nodes. Uh, do you know if there's a way to uh, basically get the entity node or your, the entity ID that you're going to be using before you insert that record into a, into a database? Uh, the question is, in terms of entity IDs, if it is possible to know the ID that is going to be used ahead of running the migration, and the answer is no. Uh, part of the ETL, uh, the last process of the ETL is the one that is saving the node, or the user, or the entity itself. Until it is saved, you cannot get the number. One thing um, is that the Migrate API allows you to specify the ID that you want to use. So and that is actually the default behavior. The default behavior when you run an upgrade is that it is going to fetch the same ID from Drupal 7 and it's going to pass that as the ID to be used in the new site. If, um, and, and, if, and if in Drupal 10 you don't have any content, it is recommended to keep it like that. 
The alternative is uh, modify the migration that was generated, the file itself, and remove the mapping for the ID of the entity. And when you do that, you need to take some extra steps. Uh, any migration that is going to be related to the one that you modified, you will uh, need to use the migrate lookup uh, process plugin to be able to map the old ID to the new one. The default behavior is just keep the old one. If you want to deviate from that, you use the migrate lookup uh, process plugin to map the old one and the new one. But in advance, you cannot know it. Yeah, okay. yeah. You, you 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 can you basically you can suggest the migrate API to use an ID. Okay. Yes, but I highly recommend that you. Don't. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other question? Yes. Uh, the question is, is, is there example code for migrations? Yes. Uh, the migrate plus module has a lot of examples within it. The book that I wrote, uh, 31 Days of Migrations, it comes with a GitHub repository. And in there is like 20 or so different examples. The, if, if you go to, to the slides, I pointed out to like, a full workshop like this session but as a full workshop um, and there is you know you have the, the example of a full upgrade as of like if you mean like a centralized place in which I can find all the examples I don't think anybody has like compiled them in one resource but uh, migrate tools uh, there are a lot of the, uh, examples there the 31 days of migration books there are a lot of examples there and this workshop um, there are a lot of examples there at least those are the ones that I can point out at the top of my head. Yes? So let me see if I get the question right. Um, you want a way to read data from the variable table in Drupal 7 and create multiple configuration entities in Drupal 10. Uh, okay, yes, that is possible and uh, that is actually heavily used as part of the automatic upgrade process. And there are uh, source plugins to read from the variable table in Drupal 7 and depending on the destination process that you use in the, uh, you know, in your custom YAML files, you can create different um, con configuration entities in Drupal 10. So I cannot give you like a concrete example, but if you run this process that I just described, I would say that at least that that you described is used like 10 times, like reading from variable table and creating configuration entities in Drupal 10. That, that is supported out of the box. Are there any other questions? Nope. Okay. Well, thank you very, very much for coming. <laughs>